idea by Marsha Amidon Lusted. Daniel Burnham was stumped. He wanted the world's Columbian Exposition to have a centerpiece to rival the Eiffel Tower from the Paris Exposition of 1889. The graceful iron and steel structure had become a landmark, recognized the world. France's engineering talent had now looked superior to America's. Some distinctive feature is needed, Burnham said to a group of engineers at a weekly dinner in 1891. Something novel, original, daring, and unique must be designed and built if American engineers are to retain their prestige and standing. Burnham wanted something to out Eiffel, Eiffel, to draw people to Chicago. George Washington Gale Ferris, a young engineer from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, was present at the banquet that night. Hearing Burnham's words, Ferris recalled an idea he had been working on. He quickly scribbled the design on his dinner napkin. It was something that had never been done before. A revolving wheel, 250 feet in diameter. It would hold more than 2,000 people in 36 cars attached to the wheel's rim. Each car would be as large as a bus and hold 40 people seated to 60 people standing at a time. The wheel was not finished in time for the fair's opening day, May 1st, 1893, but by June the engineers were testing it. On the first day of testing with passengers aboard, crowds of spectators ignored the engineers' request to stand back. Instead, they rushed the wheel and climbed into the cars for the 20-minute ride. Ten minutes were spent getting passengers off and on. This was followed by a ten-minute non-stop single revolution. Ferris's grand idea was a huge success and wildly popular. It quickly became the highlight of the fair. It cost 50 cents to ride the wheel, the same as the price of admission to the fair itself. The huge wheel cost 400000 to build and maintain during the exposition. That was an enormous expense in those days. But its total earnings were more than $700,000, making a tidy profit for the fair organizers, Ferris, and the investors who had helped pay him for the project. After the fair closed in October, the wheel was dismantled. It was used several more times, including at the St. Louis World's Fair in 1903, but two years later, it was sold for scrap metal. It took 200 pounds of dynamite to finally knock the huge wheel off its towers. Ferris's wheel is gone, but its legacy lives on in almost every amusement park and carnival. Next time you're awed by the views from the top, think of George Ferris and the vision he had to put you there.